In 1927, an 86-year-old man by the name of Henry Robinson shared his home at Elan Road, Battersea in South London, England, with his four children. Frederick, a tutor, aged 26, Kate and Lilla, who were both school teachers, and a widow by the name of Mrs. Perkins, and a 14-year-old son, Peter. At the end of that year, strange events started happening at the property, which would eventually get the attention of the police and media. It all began on November the 29th, 1927, when lumps of coal and pennies began to fall on the conservatory. The conservatory was a lean-to building at the back of the house. Then a few days later, it abruptly stopped, but resumed again in early December 1927. Mr Robinson said that he had lived in the house for 25 years, and up till that time, he and his family had lived peacefully and happily. Although the pieces of coal were very small, they broke the glass, where things became so serious that they decided to call the police. Up until that time, Henry Rumson did not believe there was anything abnormal about the incident and figured some person was throwing objects over the garden wall. A policeman later arrived and they both stood in the backyard and waited for the culprit to begin throwing objects. It did not take long before pieces of coal and pennies started to rain down upon the conservatory roof but for some inexplicable reason, could not work out the actual trajectory of where the objects were actually coming from. Then out of nowhere, a lump of coal struck the policeman on his helmet, where he quickly ran to the garden wall, hoping to catch the perpetrator in the act, but there was nobody there. On December the 19th, the cleaner approached Henry Robinson in a distressed state, stating she could no longer work in the house, and led him to the toilet in the backyard and pointed to a pile of red-hot cinders, yet there was no fire to be seen. So where did they come from? Henry again called a policeman, but they decided to stand in the kitchen in the hope of catching the culprit in the act, and within a matter of seconds, two potatoes came flying across the yard. The following Monday at 9am, matters reached a climax and in the following hour, the family were traumatised by loud bangings throughout the house. Henry's sister saw a hall stand swaying and had to call her brother to help catch it before it fell over. But she claimed that a strange force had somehow grabbed it from her hands and it fell against the stairs, causing it to break into two. Then the window panel in Henry's room was smashed to pieces, leaving him in such a state that he needed to leave the house. A man called Mr Bradbury had to be called into the house around 10am to help carry him out. As Henry was being carried, a heavy chest of drawers crashed to the floor in his bedroom. Mr Bradbury was witness to everything that was happening. He said that he had entered the house at around 10am. At this stage, nobody wanted to stay in the house and were now afraid to go inside. The following year, on 19th of January 1928, Harry Price, the famous English psychic researcher and head of the National Laboratory of Psychical Research, which he established in 1926, decided to visit the Elan Road property. Harry Price witnessed the damage caused, and shortly after arriving, a wooden handle gas lighter was thrown at him. Looking for a natural cause, rather than anything paranormal, Frederick Robinson came under suspicion and was taken in by police for questioning and observation at St John's Hospital, Battersea. However, the activity continued while he was at the hospital. Harry Price returned to the house on Monday the 23rd of January 1928 and heard something that sounded like a heavy boot or heavy object and began to look for the source of the noise. A reporter by the name of Mr Grice from the Evening News was also in attendance. Harry Price then spotted something dark under a chair in the corner and putting his hand on it, found it was a pair of ladies' black shoes. He then put his hand inside the right shoe and found a hard object, which he pulled out. It was a small bronze cherub that weighed about four ounces. Suddenly, cries of astonishment came from the woman and told him that the ornament had been missing from the mantelpiece of the front sitting room. Before it went missing, it had stood along with another bronze cherub for 25 years. How did it end up in her shoe? They told Harry Price that normally these objects would never have been moved from the front room. Harry Price surmised that if the bronze ornament had come from the next room, it would have had to have made two right angle turns and travelled over their heads. It was also conceivable that the ornament may have been thrown by one of the women, but because he was very close to both Mrs Perkins and Kate Robinson, he saw no sudden suspicious movement from either of them. 
Mr. Grice, the reporter, also declared that he has seen nothing unusual that could have accounted for the ornament moving from one room to the other. He also said that when he touched the object, it was quite cold, and if either of the women had been holding it, it would have felt warm to touch. Mrs. Perkins also informed Mayor Price that during the weekend, there had been a lot of activity in the house where chairs had been moved down the hallway in a single file on their own, and when she was trying to set the table for dinner on the Saturday, the chairs stacked themselves upon the table. When the chairs continued to move, she went outside into the street to get help from a policeman. The officer was extremely sceptical about her claims and believed she'd placed the chairs onto the table herself. Kate Robinson then described how a table and an umbrella stand had fallen over and a large briefcase was thrown from a chair onto the floor. Kate said that they were so frightened that they ran outside and proceeded to observe what was happening inside from the kitchen window and saw all the kitchen chairs fall over. When they went to rearrange the furniture back into its place for some strange reason, the furniture was extremely heavy to pick up. After a period of time, the strange occurrences started to drive the family to distraction and everyone was feeling helpless. For safety concerns, Mrs. Perkins' son Peter was sent away to some friends in the country. The two remaining sisters were determined to rid the house of the paranormal activity and to make matters worse, the crowds of onlookers were beginning to frighten them. On the weekend, mounted police had to be called in to hold back mobs of people. On Saturday evening, a group of people threatened to break into the house if they were not allowed to investigate the phenomena for themselves. After a while, the activity died down, and the case was closed, and the family moved to a new address. Harry Price later wrote that the incidents at the house still puzzled him, where on three occasions when he witnessed the movements of the objects, he could never be quite certain that a normal explanation could not be found for the supposed phenomena, though he had no evidence. That the worry and anxiety caused by the disturbances had definitely reacted to some of the Robinson's family seems obvious. Whether this reaction was normal or extra normal one is, in the absence of the further evidence, a matter for speculation. Price considered that the evidence for the abnormality of the occurrences is much stronger than the theory that the Robinson family were wholly responsible for the trouble. 